Assalamu alaikum, I'm Saika, a qualified alima. And if you are interested to know what does Islam say about free will and determinism, and you want to understand how do we incorporate these beliefs into our actions, then today's video will answer some of your questions. Free will is when you completely rely on yourself. You believe you can do whatever you want. You are in control, in power over your destiny. But the problem is you can't achieve everything you want. You can't be successful every single time. And this can lead to bitterness, rage and frustration. In contrast, determinism is where you completely rely upon God. You completely rely upon external forces and you do not believe in yourself. This leads to lack of motivation, not taking on any responsibility, and you don't take any action to change your life. So both extremes are problematic. So how does Islam balance between the two? Let's find out today. This video is divided in two parts. The first part is Islam's understanding on how to balance free will and determinism. And the second part, it's more practical. What actions should we take to manifest our belief? So Rasulullah told us in the hadith that the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was a pen and he ordered the pen to write. And the pen said, what shall I write? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the pen, write down everything from that moment of time until the day of judgment. And Rasulullah in another hadith told us that the pen wrote every single thing 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. So as Muslims, it's part of our iman to believe in Qadr and we believe everything has been written down from before. But there were earlier Islamic sects who were confused in understanding what is Qadr and what is free will. Let's look at these sects and try to understand what was the problem. So from amongst these sects was a sect called Jabariya. Jabariya, they believe we have no free will at all. They completely believed in determinism. They said every single thing has been decreed for us. Whatever good we do is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for us. And whatever bad we do, it's also because it's already been written down. We have no choice at all over our actions. In contrast, the opposite group, they are called the Qadariya. The Qadariya were completely for free will. They said there's no such thing as pre-decree. We are in control over our lives and we have complete free will to choose whatever we want. Then the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they said, both of you, your understanding is problematic, not just for us human beings, but also in our Aqidah, because both of these groups are negating some of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Jabariya, when they say, we have no free will. The problem is for every good or bad, for which I had no choice at all, I was compelled to do those things, then how can I be rewarded for it and get Jannah? Or how can I be punished for it and get hellfire? It's unfair. So when we say this is unfair, what are we saying? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have the attribute of justice. And this is very problematic. As for the Qadariya, when they say we have complete free will, what are they saying? They're saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no control over us. He has no knowledge of our actions. He only finds out about our actions once we have done them. So they are negating the attribute of the power and knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, that is very problematic too. Then Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they say, no, we cannot negate any of these attributes. There has to be a balanced approach. And the balanced approach is that the ultimate will is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And between this ultimate will, we have some free will. And our free will is that we can choose what is right and what is wrong. We can choose what good actions we want to do and we can choose what bad actions we do. And when we say everything's written down, it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knew what good we were going to do and what bad we were going to do. And he allowed us to do those things. So every time I am making a choice to do something, it's not just my choice. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to make that choice, good or bad. And that's where the accountability will be for my choices. So now that we have agreed that Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe both in free will and in Qadr, that we have free will, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ultimate will. So now once I have a belief, that belief has to show in my actions. So in Islam, when I say I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my belief in that one God should show in my actions through my ibadat, through obedience. 
if it's not in my actions, if I don't worship that one God, then the belief is problematic. Similarly, when we say I believe in Qadr, that belief in Qadr should show in my actions. If it's not showing in my actions, then again, there's a problem in my claim that I believe in Qadr. To understand this, let's break down Qadr. So Qadr is to believe in good and bad. That good and bad are both from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But out of respect, we don't attribute any evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now let's divide the good and the bad. Good is khair, bad is shar. Bad, let's call it suffering, and good, let's call it blessings. So there are two types of sufferings in our lives, and there are two types of blessings in our lives. The two types of sufferings, number one, are sufferings which are purely decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his wisdom, and we play no role at all in it. The second type of suffering is the result of our disobedience and our sins. Similarly, there are two types of blessings. There are those blessings which are purely decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, there are those blessings for which I worked hard for them. So the first type of suffering, which is purely decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we had no role in it at all, would include examples like being born in a very poor family. Poverty, it's a major test. Or being born with a disability. Or someone dying, someone passing away. Or maybe some kind of illnesses, you know, which are not a result of an unhealthy lifestyle or anything, but, you know, they are purely decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, these sufferings, which you did nothing for them, and they were purely decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is his hikmah, his wisdom behind it. And for us, all these sufferings are a form of test. We get tested for our sufferings. Now, in any test, what do we say? How do we pass the test? We say have sabr. But can I say I have sabr but I complain and complain, Ya Allah, why me, why me, why me? That's not really sabr. So these kind of tests, it's not just about sabr. You have sabr plus the most important thing is you are pleased with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I'm not pleased with his will and I'm always complaining, that is not true sabr. It's, I don't have a choice to do anything about it. But I have the choice to complain. I'm continuously complaining. That is not sabr. And thirdly, just because I've got sabr and I'm pleased with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does that mean I just have to just live with it and not do anything about it? No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us, he said, one thing that can change qadr, it's dua. Dua is the weapon of a believer. So the third thing that we should do is make dua. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change those sufferings into blessings. And now that we have the sabr and we are pleased with the will of Allah and we make dua, we must make sure that we take some sort of action to kind of overcome that suffering. So the best example I can think of is the example of Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him all kind of blessings, health, wealth, children, everything. And then to test him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took everything away from him. Ayyub alayhi salam had sabr, he was pleased with the will of Allah, he never complained, and then he made dua, anni masan yadurru wa anta arhama rahimin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua and he changed everything for Ayyub alayhi salam. So the first example of belief in this suffering, which is purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we take four actions. Sabr, pleased with his will, dua, and any action that we can. Let's move on to the second type of suffering. Suffering which is a result of our sins, our disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this second type of suffering which we bring upon ourselves would include, for example, someone commits a crime and they get punished in the court. Or someone, they choose not to revise for exams and they fail the exams. Or someone who's very disobedient to their parents and then they complain they don't have a good relationship with them. So these kind of sufferings, we can't blame them on Qadr. They're the result of our actions. So what do we do to fix this kind of suffering? The thing we need to do, it's tawbah. It's sincere repentance and we blame ourselves and we don't blame Qadr. And for repentance, it's so important to feel guilty. So you know, whenever you feel guilty, don't disregard that guilt. Guilt is so important. That guilt is going to tell you you have done something wrong. You need to fix the problem. 
So we try to fix a problem and for that we do sincere tawba and we try our best not to repeat the mistake. But in reality, as human beings, we repeat the same mistakes again and again. That means we keep on doing tawba, 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 tawba all the time as well. Second type of suffering, we can do two things. One, it's sincere repentance. And second, try to wipe away the bad actions we've done by doing more and more good actions. The more good actions we do, remember, they remove the bad actions. So good actions will remove the sufferings in our life as well, inshallah. So now let's move on to the two types of blessings. So the first type of blessing is purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you played no role in it. For example, being born in a Muslim family, being born and having very loving parents, loving family, uh, being born as a healthy child, um, birth of a new child, it, it's a blessing. Having good looks, it's a blessing. Being intelligent, it's a blessing. You have not done anything for these blessings. They are purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should be very grateful for all of these blessings and we must ensure we use these blessings to please him. Don't be arrogant of these blessings. They are not because you did anything about it. They are purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So use them to serve him. So for all of these blessings, we must do a lot of shukr. And shukr isn't just to say thank you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr is how are we using those blessings? So how are you using your good looks then? Are you, you know coming so modestly or just showing off uh, how are you using your intelligence are you using to serve Allah's deen or are you just using for personal gain all the time how are you using the love uh, you know you get from your family um, is it helping to spread more love or are you just becoming so arrogant because of the love and attention you get the blessing of religion are you trying your best to be a good Muslim or are you just too arrogant and looking down at all the other Muslims or looking down at other people so let's move on to the second kind of blessings for which you actually worked hard for. For example, you worked really hard for your exams and you got good grades. You know, you worked really hard at work and you got promotion. You worked um, really hard on your diet and, you know, you became very healthy. So in these kind of blessings, you worked really hard. And these kind of blessings, you don't get them just because you worked hard. For all of our blessings, we need to remember there's always a suburb through who we get these blessings. So we need to have gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we also need to learn to be grateful to people. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, he said, if you cannot thank people, you cannot thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to make sure we are grateful to our parents, to our teachers, to our colleagues, to all those people through whom we get blessings. So for all our blessings, we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are grateful to people and we need to learn to appreciate ourselves. So in short, when we say we believe in Qadr and we have no sabr in our lives and we have no shukr in our lives and we have no repentance in our lives and we don't appreciate the people in our lives and we don't even appreciate ourselves, there's a problem with our belief. So we need to make sure sabr and shukr, they are part of my actions, of my everyday life. I hope this helps you. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.